I invented the song. The reason I did that was because if there's one wire wrong, compressor will fry now. You don't get a second chance. It doesn't say, oh, well, I'm sorry, uh, try again through a Thursday. No, it, it's gone. You burned it. One wire will fry a compressor. It was so bad that uh, Carrier came out with uh, a movie called Miswiring is Murder. Because it does. If there's one wire wrong, it's gone. So you have to learn how to wire it up perfectly without mistakes. Because you don't get a second chance. Uh, I'm sorry. No, oh, never mind. It's only $800 and six hours of my life. I mean, that's nothing, right? So you're going to have to learn. That's why I wrote the song. But before we get to that, we're going to start talking about starting relays. If you don't have your books, open your books to the chapter on starting relays. We're going to go through the chapter. I'll show you the pictures. I'll walk across the other side and I'll grab a relay or two and bring them over and we'll talk about them. But I mean it sincerely when I say thank you, most of you, for trying. As I can tell, you tried. Day class, third. So I'll give you all 102% tonight. 2% more than I gave you day class. There are four types. my best on spelling potential. Let ye who makes no spelling errors cast the first correction. All right. Start relays. Purposely, you have to have a start relay to help a motor start. In this case, the motors are the compressors. Now, in some motors, you can use an internal switch called a centrifugal switch. Our motors have two windings. We have a split phase motor. We have two windings in our motor. We have a start winding. We have a run winding. Now, just to help you remember this, I drew the run winding with the wire. That's very important because there is a difference in the actual physical thickness of the wire and the amount of turns. The, one, the run winding from common to run is the least resistance. From common to start is the high and the highest is from start to run because you're reading through both windings with your own meter. So because the run winding is on all the time, they spend the money and put a decent sized wire in. Start winding is only on for a few seconds. Since it's only on for a few seconds, why spend all that extra money on the copper? So they use cheap wire. Now, I'm not going to talk about how to ohm out a compressor today. I just want to explain to you the difference. There is a difference. The start winding is the winding that's physically closer to the stator. You hold the motor up and you look at it and you can see the wire is thinner. It's because the wire is thinner, it has a higher resistance than the run winding. It has a thicker wire. The highest reading is through both. Basically, 
We want to shut off the start winding after the motor has started. That's the whole purpose of the... Didn't it say like 75%? I say 75, books are 75, I say 80. Yeah, that's basically it. When we get almost to correct running speed, it shuts down the start winding because we don't need it anymore. The motor has started. Now, you want to shut off the winding. You don't want to have current going through the winding normally because you want to run only on the run winding. On old motors, on old school, they don't even use the letter R, they use the letter M for main winding. You might see someday an S, M, and C. You go, what's M? M is the main winding or the running winding. So start relay shuts off the winding and or associated caps as you want to shut off, start caps. Now, on a refrigerator, we want to use something that doesn't cost a lot of money, because the refrigerator doesn't cost a lot of money. So we use something called a current relay. Let me show you a quick little picture of current relay. Usually there's a label on it, power or L1. The relay's got a tight coil, and then it goes to R. We also have a solenoid that goes in here. The solenoid has normally open contacts. And when the motor starts, the solenoid is energized and we feed power to our start winding. What makes the current relay interesting was the coil is in series with the run winding. This goes to R. And so what that means is you have two little windings in series. The current relay gets its name from the fact that all the current that goes through the run winding also goes through this relay coil. A motor that's trying to start will pull three to six times the amount of current it takes to run the motor once it's reached running speed. So during normal operation, when the motor's running normally, there's not enough magnetism to activate that coil. But when the motor's at a dead stop, hi, from tonight on, if you're late, you'll be singing for me. I'm looking forward to having singers. The current relay is called a current relay because all the current from the motor goes through the winding of the current relay. It works really good. You got to make sure you have the exact relay for the exact compressor that's not universal. You got to buy the right one to match the compressor. Otherwise, it's not going to work right. Current relays are found even today on good units, one third horsepower or smaller. Now, you might want to ask yourself, well, why does it go only a third? Well, can you imagine how big the relay to have to be for a five-ton compressor? You're going to have to have wires in the size of my little finger coiled up. It's going to be a monster. And what the magnetic field kind of like a problem? Too. This is the magnetic. Magnetism could be a secondary problem. Maybe. Maybe it could. So for cost purposes. You will not find a current relay on compressors larger than one-third of the horsepower. It costs too much money to build the relay. The other thing about the current relays, and I'd like you to refer to your book, I believe it's the second or third page in your chapter, shows a picture of a current relay. Current relays also have another interesting side effect.